We begin this half hour with a mystery man taking the stand in New Jersey. It happened yesterday during the trial of Duran Ravi, the former Rutgers University student accused of spying on his roommate who later committed suicide. This mystery man is called simply MB, and nothing of what he said was recorded. No photographs were allowed, but 48 Hours correspondent and lawyer Aaron Moriarty was in the courtroom during his testimony. And Aaron, good morning to you. Good morning. In fact, I had to be in the courtroom in order to see him. This trial has been unusual on so many levels. The defendant is accused of using a camera to commit a hate crime. That's not typical. There's also an unusual amount of evidence in the form of emails, texts, and instant messages. And then yesterday, another surprise when this crucial witness for the prosecution took the stand. See what call MB? MB, please. The audio in the New Jersey courtroom was shut off as the witness, known only as MB, took the stand in the bias trial of Darun Ravi. 20-year-old Ravi is accused of setting up this webcam and spying on his freshman roommate, Tyler Clementi, during a sexual encounter with MB. On September 22, 2010, two days after Clemente discovered he had been spied on, he committed suicide, jumping off the George Washington Bridge. In court, MB was protected like an alleged victim of a sex crime. Only his hands were allowed to be photographed. The witness, dressed neatly in a blue and white striped shirt, appeared to be in his late 20s or early 30s. He testified that he had met Tyler Clemente online and that he visited the student in his dorm room three times. During the second visit on September 19th, he said, quote, while we were intimate together on the bed, I glanced over my shoulder and noticed a webcam that was faced toward the direction of the bed, and I thought it was just kind of strange. Being in a compromising position and seeing a camera lens just kind of stuck out, he said. And when he left the room, he noticed a group of about five students. I definitely got the impression that they were looking at me, he said, and told the court that he found it, quote, unsettling. Someone hit a camera in a place that you expected to be private and, and, they, and they, they took a video of you and then showed it to other people. How would you feel? The witness said he had met Darun Ravi when he first came to the dorm that day and that the defendant had returned briefly, he said, to shuffle some things on his desk. Prosecutors accused Ravi of photographing the sexual encounter because of a bias against gays. But the defense says the defendant, concerned about an older stranger in his room, was just trying to protect his belongings. And Aaron joins us now. So you were in the courtroom yesterday. Aaron. It's the only way to get to see him. And, and it was really important to see him. It was almost more important to see him than hear him. And here's why. Because Darun Ravi is charged with invasion of privacy, which in New Jersey means that he was trying to view a sex act or photograph a sex mm -hmm. act. But the defense says, no, that's not the reason at all he was doing this. He saw this older guy come in with his roommate, and he was worried about his belongings. And, and he described it, the guy as sketchy, and another student described him as creepy. So, of course, mm. his appearance was very important. And he this is, older guy is MB, the anonymous yes, witness. Yes, exactly. Now, MB does appear to be about 10 years older than these, these guys, definitely around 29, 30 years of age. But at least on the sand, he did not look sketchy. He had, mm. you know, nicely close cropped hair, uh, dressed nicely. And so it will be up to then the jury to decide whether it was credible that an 18 year old could have looked at this guy and said, oh, I'm worried about my belongings in the in my room. What was your sense being there? Um, well, it, it, it was it was incredibly sad. I mean, this this guy is one of the important reasons why the prosecution wanted him there is Tyler Clemente can't testify. He committed suicide. So if Tyler was a victim, this man was a victim too, and he was treated like a victim in the courtroom. That's why we weren't allowed to show his face or use his name, only MB. Um, it must have been very difficult for him to talk. He was asked to talk about some very private um, moments that that he had with Tyler Clemente. So it was moving in that sense that it was obviously very difficult for him to talk and, in the court. And he, so he, you're, you're suggesting that he got emotional in the courtroom? No, he didn't get emotional. No, actually, in fact, I thought he was amazingly level. But to have to talk about this very private thing in front yes. of strangers when he said that he was uncomfortable in the uh, dorm, saw kids looking at him, I mean, how much worse then to have to talk about this in a courtroom 
packed with reporters who wanted to see him. That is a public space, even though it's not being shared with everyone. One last thing, Erin. Do you think that MB's testimony is going to be more helpful to the defense or the prosecution? Well, it's really interesting. Yes, of course it helped the prosecution, but uh, the defense was very effective in the cross-examination, saying, if you really want to have a private moment with Tyler Clemente, why would you choose to meet him in a crowded dorm when there are students up all hours who clearly saw him come in and go out? And I thought the defense was very effective in that. Many layers to all of this. Erin yes. Moriarty, thank you for sharing them with us. Erin Moriarty, 48 Hours correspondent and attorney.